and still on this Supreme Court verdict, joining me live is a member of the INABA and legal practitioner who used to be part of the electoral body, that's INEC, Ibrahim Bawa SEN. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Now, how would you describe the Supreme Court verdict dismissing Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi's appeals for lacking in merit? Now, the first thing I would want us to appreciate is the fact that when a decision is handed down by the court, you look at what are the indices considered by the court in making the decision. If the court comes to the conclusion that the facts as presented before it and the law as argued by the parties never satisfy the standards required to establish the case, the court will naturally come to the conclusion that the case as it's presented before it lacks merit. So in the presidential petition, which the Supreme Court considered the appeal, the court came to the conclusion that there was no merit in the petitions presented by the two appellants before it. As it is, as a lawyer, you must accept the final verdict of the court. That is, that you take it in good faith and you prepare for the next round of activities that will usher in good governance in the country. Now, speaking of taking things in good faith, one of the grounds of Peter Obi's appeal is alleged multiple nomination of Vice President Kashim Shatima. And in line with Section 35 of the Electoral Act 2022, what is a double nomination and the ratio of the court in dismissing this ground? Now, when, the, when you look at <coughs> the provisions of the Electoral Act, the Act aims at ensuring that no person is nominated into more than one position at a time. In which case, if a person is nominated to the position of, for instance, the president, and as at the same time, that person is also nominated within the same election period to the office of Senate or any other position, that is double nomination for that person. In the case of the vice president, he was nominated as a senatorial candidate and upon being nominated as the vice president of the country he had to withdraw from the earlier position which he contested and the question was whether there was double nomination and the court came to the conclusion that no there wasn't what happened was a proper case of i had one position not that he was nominated at the same time to the two positions. And so there is no nom double nomination in the instant, in the instant petition. So in essence, in, in essence, leaving the senatorial position rendered that, made that not a double nomination. Now in the verdict, in Abubakar, Atiku Abubakar's request for leave of court to produce additional evidence, this was rejected. From the point of law, what exactly is your reaction to this rejection? Even though you've already told us that as a lawyer, you have to accept what the court says in good faith. What would be the legal uh, interpretation of this rejection? Okay. Now there are standards set by the courts the appellate court, pre pre uh, precisely the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, that a litigant is entitled to submit additional evidence at a certain point if at the time of presenting his initial case at the trial court, the evidence was not easily accessible. So if events occur which at the time the person brought the matter to the trial court, it was not possible for him to have obtained the facts that he needs to now bring before the appellate court. The court will consider that and give him leave to present them. But in the instant petition, what the court found was that the evidence were available. At the time the petitioners filed their petition, they knew that President Bola Tinubu had issues according to them with his certificates. So at that time they knew the facts and they ought to have taken reasonable steps to bring them. Failure to bring them at the time 
they were filing the petition makes it impossible for the court to now accept after they had concluded their case. Another reason is that even if those facts which were not easily accessible to the petitioners were later found accessible, the court must consider whether those facts can make any impact on the case and whether they are uh, reasonable in the circumstance of the case. And the court found that those, the facts sought to be tendered were available and they were not properly brought before the court. And even if accepted, it won't make any impact. So finally, speaking of impact, uh, just very briefly, what is your advice to both the governed and the government considering the rest judicata on adjudication of the 2023 presidential election? Now, where a case is decided, particularly by the final court, whether the Court of Appeal as the final court in respect of some petitions, but in particular, in this particular instance, where it is the Supreme Court that has taken a decision. What is left for us as a nation is to now look at how do we further the course of the country. Every person that wanted to, to rule the country was for the purpose of uplifting the, for uplifting the life of Nigeria, making Nigeria progress. So my call is that the government should be magnanimous in victory, ensure that every aspect that needs to be carried along, every Nigerian that needs to be consulted, every aspect of a society that needs to be developed is developed. For the losers and the governed, my position and my advice is that we should all be focused. There is no governance without constructive criticism. My prayer is that Nigerians who are on the other side of the divide should give constructive criticism to ensure that governance is given to Nigeria in the best interest of the country. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with Ibrahim Bawa.